Hey guys, Sam here from Technologetic and today we're doing a video explaining how to use your camera in under five minutes. We'll go through the uh, main basic exposure control settings as well as showing you how to set the right color for your photo. Logo. So there's three main ways that you control the brightness or exposure of your shot within your camera. The first one is shutter speed, which is how quickly the photo takes or essentially how long the mirror within your camera is exposed to the light. So this can be a variety of different options and it's all measured in seconds. So you can take a photo that opens the shutter for one second and then closes it, or you can have it one one hundredth or one two fiftieth of a second. And basically the shorter it is, the le less light it lets in. But on the uh, inverse, if you have a really short shutter speed, so the photo takes really quickly, you're able to capture precise points in motion. So if you throw a ball or something, you're able to see the crisp detail of the ball, even though it's moving really quickly. If you have a really long shutter speed and it opens the shutter for a second, it actually captures the full motion of the ball in the air. And thus the ball becomes blurry. And while you might like this effect, uh, generally if you've got high motion moving cars or sports events or something, you want a really quick shutter speed so you can take photos of things like this. The next one is aperture. This is essentially how wide the element is in, in your lens. So it starts off at the biggest and lets in the most amount of light. And then each time you move it down, which is measured in f-stops, it decreases the amount of area that light can actually come on by half. So if you open it at the full width, which is generally about f-stop 1.8 or 2.8 or maybe even 3.5 on your camera, this will let in the most light and will make it easier for you to shoot a shot in the dark. Uh, with that said, it reduces the amount of distance that's actually in focus when you're on such a wide f-stop. Um, so if I'm standing here and I'm on my largest f-stop, if I take one step back or one step forward, I'll instantly go out of focus. If you have it on the other end, which is a high number f-stop or a really small uh, hole of your camera, it'll actually keep uh, everything uh, in focus. So if I take a couple of steps back or a couple of steps forward, you'll remain in focus. So you've just kind of got to weigh that up based on your environment and how much you want to keep in focus. The final way to control exposure within a camera is by setting the ISO, which I would describe as kind of similar to having the volume on a stereo. When you turn the volume up on a stereo, you'll find that it adds a lot of distortion to your sound, and the same is true with a camera. When you have the ISO, which goes from probably 100 on your camera to maybe 6400 or 56000, it really depends on your camera, you'll find that it adds digital noise, which is kind of a grain effect on top of your cameras, which doesn't really look pleasant to the eye, as you can see here. So the lower your ISO, the less brightness you'll have, but the less digital noise you'll have, and the higher you increase it, uh, the more you can see of the shot, but it adds a lot of um, grain and things that you honestly don't want in your uh, photos. So the combination of these three elements is how you make the perfect photo. Uh, you need to decide how quickly your subject's moving, uh, how far they're moving in front and behind of the camera so you, know, you can get them in focus, and then finally how much digital noise is acceptable to you um, based on how the light conditions of where you're taking a photo or filming. The final element you have for taking the perfect photo is by setting your white balance, which is essentially what the light conditions are where you are. If you're filming or taking a photo inside, you might have tungsten lights in your house, and this is a very orange type of white, and so you need to set your camera to compensate for this. Whereas if you're outside in daylight, it's a very blue kind of light, so you need to set your camera for that too. Um, another way of doing this is by getting a white piece of paper, or some people own white uh, photography cards, and you take a photo of a photo of white, and the camera basically works out what you've set white to be and adjusts the rest of your um, the settings for that to compensate for that particular light conditions. So thanks for watching this video on camera elements explained in five minutes. Hopefully you'll be able to take the perfect photo in the future and stay tuned and subscribe for more videos like this.